사랑하고 사랑을 받으며 내가 혼자가 아니라는 걸 나로 알게 하여 주신 주님이 항상 나와 함께 계시 It was a really beautiful song, wasn't it? Thank you for this beautiful choir song. Okay, uh, before we start, let's pray together. Dear Father who is in heaven, thank you for your grace and help to open this Bible seminar. By your wonderful grace, we came here to listen to your word. May your love and grace upon us and guide all of us with your abundant mercy. We're going to open our Holy Scripture to look into it. You may open our heart and give us more understanding to understand your holy word and way. This is our prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who loves us always. Amen. All right. Um, <clears throat> welcome all of you in the name of our Lord. Um, uh, we prepare uh, this Bible seminar uh, in order to check up um, our eternal destination. And uh, uh, we, we have to conform and we have to check our eternal life based upon the words of God. Uh, we are not going to live uh, even 100 years in this world. Um, Having eternal life, this is very important. The, as you know well, the Bible says, uh, the, as a human being, uh, we are not going to live in this world eternally. And eternal world is here and come to us. Before we finish our life on earth, we have to check this one first. Let me start with this scripture, John chapter 5, verse 39. If you have scriptures, if you have the Bible, please open your Bible. Verse 39. <clears throat> you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. Um, you search the scriptures. Scriptures means uh, the Bible, the Holy Bible. Usually, uh, most of the Christians, uh, they used to carry the Bible and keep the Bible and put the Bible. But it's really hard to open it and read it. Um, they, uh, they, they know about uh, the Bible is, what, it, what the Bible is, but they don't uh, have much knowledge about what the Bible says. That's why the Bible said, actually, this passage was spoken by Jesus Christ. He said that, search, search 
the scriptures. Searching has the meaning of you have to open the Bible and read your own intention. Intentionally, you have to search something from the Bible. What should be searched? Eternal life. If there is no eternal life, Jesus was a liar, right? But uh, probably some of you already have some chance. You may have some chance to attend this kind of Bible seminar. And some of you already uh, had a good understanding about what Bible says exactly. Uh, but point is this one. Uh, listening to the words of God and study and reading and research by your own way. Uh, but one thing, you have to make this clear. You have to think. You have to think. The purpose of the study of the Bible. You think you have eternal life. The, nowadays, majority of people, they just come and go this kind of Bible seminar. And then all these contents is really familiar to listen, to hear it. But they, uh, easy to, uh, they, uh, they missed and slipped away from the obtaining the eternal life. Mm, this is a target of our Bible seminar, this, uh, this, uh, this Bible seminar. No matter what, after finish the five sessions, you have to confirm. And you need, you need to be sure about your eternal matter, eternal life. You know, being, being religious, this is really easy. Uh, as you know well, in this world, uh, there are lots of religious books and religious teaching, right? But the Bible always guides us to the right way. It directs right way, uh, rightly, always, in order to get the eternal life. But some people uh, wondered, I don't need eternal life. Why? They used to think, this world is everything. Nothing more, nothing more than this world. If I desist, nothing. I will turn to the ashes and nothing more than that. You know, there's not, there's not a liar. The Bible said, everyone, they will die, and then that's not all. After that, there will be judgment. So, uh, we have to check this one first. Why do we need eternal life? Because... When time passes, the concept of I, my ego, does not exist anymore here, right? Yourself, your ego will be gone, no more here. Yes, most of you have your own family and then you might have your own beloved people, right? And probably you already have built so many good relationships with them. But what if you are not here anymore? All those people, all those things what you have is pointless and meaningless, right? Every human being, they really want to know what will come after my death. So many research, so many scientists, even scientists, they searched it and studied it. Some people, they said, nowadays it's really tough to leave this world, right? Some of friends, they used to say, I, I don't want to live anymore, right? This is a really common conversation between friends. But they don't want to die. They don't want to, they want to die. Why? They know. You know, our own death is really scary and then mysterious things. So, having eternal life, this is a fundamental matter of all the human, all human beings. Life has meaning and purpose. Look around here, you, yourself here. All these things we put together to open the Bible seminar, right? But all these things is small, even small things, small parts there has the meaning and purpose, right? In order to use. But what about person who, can, who is going to use that? We also have the meaning and purpose. Between us, yes, this is really controversial. But if you ask this to God, you, if you ask God, yes, God is responsible of telling the truth to you. Probably uh, most of us, we start our life in this way. It was me. Right? 
actually, uh, all of you, your life wasn't your choice, right? It was given. It was given. My birth was given. That wasn't my choice, right? But I don't have any other option. No matter what, I have to take care of that, right? And always dreaming something. I don't. I really want to be this one. I don't. I really want to be that kind of person. But life goes well so far. Absolutely not. What if your life is yours? You can manage it, right? You should. Uh, you are able to manage that life, but it wasn't cooperative so far, right? So all the human, like you and me, we have to find out the reason and purpose of our life. Otherwise, all of us we are going to be victimized. We are going to be a victim of your life, right? Your life. What the purpose of your life? Here, only human. Agonize, right? So, this is another my agony, <laughs> right? Right. What trouble you today? We have trouble, right? And what made you upset today? We all have this matter, right? And what is the real matter of your life? We have the matter, right? Success, honor, love, money, people. We wonder. Uh, we we stuck in so many relationships, right? But something is sometimes going as well, and something is really hard. This is really tough work. The life as it is, this is really hard things. Uh, someone made this good question: Are you living, or are you just existing? Which one? Hmm. Living has the purpose, right? But existing, there is no purpose. Just stay here. I have no idea to where I go. And what is true meaning of life? Most people they really worried about this matter. Here, can you see that? Uh, this one, all of us, we have this kind of trouble. This thing is really bugging us. What is that? Too small, right? But let's see. Magnify our matter here. Yes. How am I supposed to live? Mm. Every one of us, we have to find this answer, right? So let's check one by one. The from birth, I, I already told you the, my birth it wasn't my choice, right? And then uh, my life started like this way, and studying. My mom always pushed my back. Go to study, right? <laughs> go to work, not go to work. Before that, go to study, go to school. What is that? Yeah, sometimes we achieve something, right? Taking a good grade and then build a good reputation, right? Yes, we, we, rush, we rush our life like that way. And what about that? Hmm? Having a good job and running good business? Hmm? And then after that, get married. And I have my own family, right? I'm really busy to take care of my own family. And then what next? Yes, I pursue my own success. Hmm? And then what is that? Retire, right? It's with a big fund. And um, retirement, what next? My own coffin is waiting for me, right? And then I have to lay my, bed, uh, lay my body six feet under. That's all. And what next? Actually, this is a summarization of every human being, right? So, which stage are you? The Bible says, Luke chapter 12, verse 20 and 21, whatever we achieve here so far, if I die right now, that is not mine anymore. 
Luke chapter 12, verse 20 and 21. Let me read here. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lay up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God? Actually, eternity is coming for us. You have to prepare for that. You need to be ready to meet the God, the Creator. Right? This, uh, this person, you know well, the Steve Jobs, right? Mm. He was an iconic person of business field, right? Mm. Apple. Really, this is a really huge enterprise. Mm. When he created uh, an you know, app store, do you know app store? And then uh, download so many uh, applications there. And then uh, record, one, one day, once he recorded 3 billion downloads, he said that, I don't think there will be any rival for the time being. He was really confident, right? But he had a pancreatic cancer. And then this is a last moment of his life. Before that cancel, he was ruined. And then, um, you know, he, he was the epitome of success. And then he invited so many uh, graduation um, um, comments. And then he said very um, uh, good uh, words there. But he said, finally said that. Death is very likely the single best invention of life. Before the, his own death, nothing, right? Whatever he achieved as his own triumphant, he cannot bring in any of it. And then he's not here anymore. Uh, we are still mourning on the website here, but the uh, Bible says, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 6 and 8, Remember your Creator, before the silver cord is loosed, or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher shattered at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the wheel. Then the dust will return to the, to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Vanity of vanity, says the preacher, all is vanity. Actually, if you look into the life only, yes, this is really vanity. Our flesh came from the dirt and they're going to return to the dirt. But we are the spiritual being. We have a spirit. The spirit is copy and image of God. That's why only human is carrying the religious heart. Religious. Do you have any, any idea? The, you know, apps is really uh, similar uh, with the human being, right? We can train them. A lot of skill, right? Uh, driving the tractor and playing the violin and so many things. Hmm? But we cannot teach this app, monkey and chimpanzee, how to make prayer. Only human can have it. That makes us different with the animal. That's why someone said, without God, life makes no sense. No sense. That's why all kind of human agony coming from because of missing conception of myself. That was, uh, this one is very famous novel, a mystery philosophy novel. Um, the, the, the contents is this one. One day, 14 years old, Sophie Amundsen, uh, after dismissed this class, uh, she got one letter. And then uh, inside of the letter, there was two questions. There were two questions. The first one, who are you? And the second question, where does the word came from? That was a really mind-blowing question to her. And then she really wanted to know. That's why she made a decision. Stop studying and then making her own journey. Uh, before that, uh, before that, receiving the letter, she never go, uh, went uh, out from her own village. 
but uh, so many uh, so many uh, incidents happen while while she travel, and then the last conclusion is nothing. Still, it's fuzzy. She couldn't get the answer. But if you look into the Bible, not this novel, and then you can you can you can figure it out. You can figure out what is meaning of human. What, what am I supposed to do as a human being before the living God, the creator? This is very important. So let's make some questions this moment. You know, uh, Bernard the show, uh, he was a very famous and humorous person. Hmm? Uh, he used to enjoy uh, very um, you know, sophisticated humor before the audience. Um, yeah, so humor is good. But truth is better. What was the truth? He died. You know, uh, this is what he said. And then this is after, after of a George, uh, George Bernard show. I knew if I stayed around long enough, something like this would happen. See? Like this. Yes, he used to enjoy uh, op opening the good conversation with people, and then he wrote down so many good books. Hmm? But he cannot avoid his own end, his own death. Technically, uh, we can say that the living is dying since my birth. Do you agree? We are dying, every one of us. We are dying. So many people have passed away already because of so many cancers, so many accidents nowadays. I'm lucky, still alive, right? Really lucky. So, um, here, uh, God is here. He's the creator. He created everything. He created everything, especially the human being. I'm here. Uh, you know, um, Basically, every human being, they are able to sense the extreme and very special power to control the entire universe. But without the Bible, we don't know what it is exactly, right? Everyone feels and lives the existence and absolute power that is control and governing the entire cosmos. But we may not know uh, what it is exactly, but it is here, right? But before studying the Bible, it was really wonder and fuzzy, but if you study the Bible, you can catch the exact point. God is here as the creator, and then he's controlling and sovereign everything here. We are the human being, not an animal. We have soul and agony of my soul. We are the being that is thinking and questioning. Don't you have any questions? If God is here, and then if you have enough time to make a personal question to Him, you would spend all night long, right? And then you can make so many questions to Him personally. God, why you created me? God, why, why am I here, right? And five years ago, that horrible accident, why happened to me, right? You would ask so many questions. But we always push by urgent things which is happening in this world. Right? Tomorrow I have to take this exam, and then I have to go somewhere. I have to go to taking right license, right? And right now I have to eat so many things, right? But that kind of question is always pushed and replaced with this, this kind of urgent matter. You know, people, they take care of the urgent matter first, right? But they really got huge regret when they passed away because they missed so many important things. Understanding God and then obtaining the eternal life, this is important and also this is really urgent matter. That's why we, we prepare and put together all this one for your own soul. I'm not going to introduce kind of a Christian ritual or some kind of church program and some kind of way to worship the God. We are not going to do that. We are going to check every single scripture for our own sake. 
Here, let's make some question. Who are you? If you cannot give right answer right this moment, you have to listen all five sessions, five sessions for the Bible Seminar, this Bible Seminar. Who are you? I'm Michael. I didn't ask your name. Who are you? I'm a doctor. I didn't ask your job, right? Who are you? I'm a mother of two children. I didn't ask your pet. You have gone too far. <laughs> right? Yes. Even myself, even I don't have anything myself. Right? Oh, I really annoying because of other people, they try to define myself, right? This is really annoying situation. Who am I, right? This is really easy and fundamental question, but easy to, easy to ignore. The other question is here. Why do you live? Why do you live? To exist? Ah, oh, this is not the right answer. Why do you live? To eat? That's really miserable, right? Why do you live? To study? Really? What, what is waiting for your study? Failure? Whatever, right? So, um, my mother used to say, uh, I, I made a question to my mother before, Mom, why do we leave? My mother said, study. <laughs> yeah, that's all. I really wonder. Uh, sometimes my mother, uh, pro, uh, when, when she's stuck in some trouble and some horrible situation, she used to say, I have no alternative hmm, to leave this world. Hmm? I have to endure so many things. This is a life, c'est la vie. So, not to survive, not to exist, not to own food, not to feeding my children, right? We have our, our own purpose here as a human being, as one person, right? Let's figure it out through this Bible seminar. We are going to cover up everything it's about it. So many questions. If God is here, right? If God is here, where is, uh, you know, this world is so unfair. What, where is the karma, right? As we know well, God is justice. Where is his justice? When he's going to serve his justice, right? And what about hmm? our humanity? Hmm? We are losing that. Humans, it's really hard to find, you know, ethical person and, you know, uh, good moral person nowadays. Hmm? Study the Bible, this is really, really not welcomed. So, every one of us, we deserve much more than that. Every one of us, God, He loves us. That's why probably He, he guided you so far uh, until uh, this place. Hmm? Someone said, the life, life is so, you know, cliche. Hmm? Life is cliche. Yeah. Yes, we have the same pattern. Yes, I'm right. You are aging? You are aging? Yes, we are all. A couple of days ago, hmm? when, when I uh, saw that, uh, I attended that boring place. Yes, I also could have some deep thinking. My thought was deep. And then, yeah, this is our final. But I don't want to think over and over. I don't want, I didn't want to think over and over. Why, this is not good meditation, right? Yes, pass away, this is a really bad situation. But that's not my story. But 
absolutely that's going to be my own story. When I was young, I heard, uh, even I don't, I don't, I don't uh, have any relationship, uh, one, one of my relatives passed away. I don't know who, 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 who he was, but when I grow up, uh, very close people, right? Decades ago, my father passed away. And my mom is waiting for that. And who's next? Me. This is coming to me. Right? To y- young people, probably you wouldn't understand that, but this is going to be your own story, right? My life was my choice, right? But I have to take. There's no any, any other option. There's no alternative. So look at this picture. This is what people are doing. What? So which way would be wise choice? What did you do? Hmm? Urgent matter, important matter, right? So we're gonna. Um, this is what people do. If you, uh, if you see the pictures, probably you would have some uh, uh, good idea which one is my choice. We need the truth. We need the truth. Uh, two ways is here: comforting lies, and unpleasant truth. Which one is going to help you? We need the truth, right? We need the truth. The most people don't uh, really want, to, uh, want the truth. They just want constant reassurance that what they believe is, tr- is the truth. People, they used to believe what they want to believe. This is truth nowadays. Job chapter 14, verse 1 and 2 said, Man who is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He comes forth like a flower and fades away. He flees like a shadow and does not continue. Yeah, this is a human. The Bible says this is a human life. You know, in this world, so many religious books, so many religious teaching, but only Bible can tell us what is a human being. Who are you, uh, who, who you are, and what you are. Only the Bible can tell us. Sometimes if you read the Bible, yes, you, the unpleasant truth has come across to me. Really hard to understand, but that is absolute and clear evidence God is telling the truth. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 23, For all his days are sorrowful, and his work Burdensome. Even in the night, his heart takes no rest. This also is vanity. Yes, this is uh, our situation. Bible telling the truth. What is true happiness? Why do you live? Some people said to take happiness. You know, happiness was given on the way to follow the truth. The happiness, this is not a goal and target of life. Our life needs to be happy, right? What is true happiness? This is what we used to do. Some thought they would be happy if they made money, so they worked hard. This is what is going on around us. But we have to uh, think this one. However, it turns out they're making money by selling their happiness. Yes, this is what we are doing here. The purpose and meaning of life, let's ask God. God, If God is alive, he's responsible for the answer to your question. Right? That is true, God. So we are going to cover all those questions. The God is creator. He should create this world well as the creator. Right? But nowadays, as you see, uh, all the situation in our environment is ruining it's going worse and worse. Global warming and earthquake, 
so many natural disasters attacks a human being. And what about karma? I already mentioned about it. This word is too unfair, right? Where is the karma? Hmm? God is justice. Then, why should we be suffered with injustice? And God is good, as you know well. And God is love. That's why we can understand He created heaven. But why He created hell? Why? What purpose? Really wondered, right? And next, my matter. Why He created me? Sometimes, I don't want to even exist here. All the agonies, all the sufferings just push me down and the loss of pressure. Really, all the situation is making me suffocated. This is really tough work, right? I don't know why, but I have taken my life. No choice, no alternatives. And why we can see him? God, uh, he wants to show himself and reveal himself to the people. Why he is not obvious? Hmm? Why we have to search him and find him, struggle him to see, uh, struggle to see him? Hmm? Why is he uh, he's look like a hidden here? Hid himself. All these matters we are going to cover this throughout this Bible seminar. We're going to cover that all throughout the Bible seminar. The Bible, the more and more we discover, the more and more we study, the more we will be able to prove it is true. That's the purpose of this Bible seminar. Let's check. Let's focus. What is death? Right? Is it extinction or uh, extension of our existence. What is death? Yes, we're going to face someday. Here. What happened when a person died? Extinction or transfer? If death will be moving into another place, we need to prepare. We need to be ready, right? Extinction after own death is nothing here. That's why um, if you encounter some ho horrible situation in your life, you do better finish your life, right? You're not going to be responsible for taking care of that kind of broken and ruined life anymore, right? Nothing. But what if death is your transfer, the changing place? It's the opening door like opening door. And then you have to prepare for this. So what is waiting for us after death? Are you ready to die? This is not a threatening. Are you ready to die? Are you ready to meet God? No problem. What if God asks you to get to heaven? Because of what you think you can come here? What would you say? The Bible said, The heart of the wise in the house of mourning, but the heart of fool in the house of myrrh. Myrrh is a party, right? Mm. Let's see. Mm. Here, uh, the photographer, um, the Walter Shells, he, uh, he have carried a very uh, unique uh, project um, he took a picture of somebody who alive, and then also he took a picture when he passed away. This is life. This is death. One thing is missing, right? Someone is gone, right? What about this man? Life and death. Life and death. Even baby, you know? Uh, she got brain cancer. Uh, her name is Elmira. Elmira. Hmm? Mother is Iran, uh, Iran uh, woman. She had carried her life only 17 months. That's all. 
and then gone. So Walter Schultz, uh, he opened this exhibition uh, at the title, Life Before Death. Yes, this is a really um, good to think about our own death. Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 9, verse 12 said, For man also does not know his time, like fish taken, a, taken in a cruel net, like a bird caught in a snare. So the sons of man are snared in the evil time when he falls suddenly upon them. We don't know the future, right? So there are lots of embarrassing things in our life. Yes, that's the life. Life is too tough. Someone sang, too young to die, too drunk to live. Right? Mm. That's the life. Someone said, the salabi. Here, mm. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7 and 8. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. We have to prepare my own ending. Returning is not ending. There will be judgment. That's why the Bible warns us. You need to be prepared. You need to prepare your own death. Death is not the end. Hmm? This is our ultimate ending. The most accurate prophecy in the world, we all die. The Bible said, Hebrews 9, verse 27, And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. Um, Here's a question. A certain liquid is here. If you drop one drop, this uh, drinking water, if you do that, the possibility of death is only 5%. Would you drink it or not? Only 5%. <laughs> what if I try to enforce you to drink this one? What would you do? Probably you will be shocked, right? Why this fat guy is pushing me to drink this water, right? <laughs> you are going to use your muscle, right? And then you do your best to protect not to drink this water, right? because of only 5% of probability, right? Yes, this is a good reason to move your body. But what then? God is here or not? How many percent do we have? God is here or is not here, right? Probability, 50%, which means you have to check, right? You have to move your body to figure this out through the words of God. If the, bar, uh, the Bible guarantees your eternal destination, you are safe. Right? Why? The Bible, this one is called as the words of God. The word of God guarantees your eternity and safe. The purpose of studying the words of God. But we have to uh, think like that. Actually, this is my, uh, my question before. Yes, I really want to believe God, and I, want to re- re- I really wanted to see the God, but that wasn't possible. That's not possible. And we see God. The, uh, that was really wonders. And then I cannot solve it, but when I studied the Bible, oh, I, I, I could understand reason. Our father sense the God. The sinner cannot see God. When we died, before the, uh, before the judgment set, we can see the God finally. So many religious books and activities to see the God, to sense the God, be touched by God. But, you know, that's not the right way. That's why God revealed himself through the words of God. That's why we call the Bible the revelation. You know, what is the meaning of revelation? Revelation is God revealed himself through the scriptures. 
Revelation is really um, uncommon words what we used to use in our personal days. But let's think about that. Uh, in this world, there's a lots of good vocabulary we have, right? So what kind of good vocabulary are you going to remind you? What kind of vocabulary? Good, good words. Love. love. Yes, love is good. Follow your instinct. Money, right? <laughs> Drugs, like that. Sorry about this. But so many good words that we have, right? But why your mom and daddy try to teach you? Say mom, say pa, right? You know, all over the world, all the human beings, they are doing this one, regardless of their nationality, right? Why human beings, they try to teach these words first? Because if I don't teach to my ch uh, children, I'm a real father, I'm a real mother, they wouldn't understand who is my real mom and daddy, right? But they can grow up, right? But who is my mom and daddy, right? That's why mom and daddy, they are really desperate to teach these words to them, making and building the right connection. Am I right? That's why they were desperate to teach the words. Say mom, say dad, I'm a real father and I'm a real mother. You know, saying this way, this is the uh, meaning of revelation. Right? That's why, as a, as a corrupted person, mm, we are not able to sense the God by our own way. That's why God, he gave us the revelation. That's the Bible. That's why every human being, we are responsible for uh, studying the Bible. The Bible for every human being. The scientists, they, uh, they uh, produce uh, this data here. In this physical world, the visible thing is only 22%. So for example, sun, stars, earth, animals, plants, a plant, a man, desk, chair. But invisible part is 78%. Air. Electric wave and sound, power, gravity, hearts, love, conscience, spirit, God. Lots of invisible things here. Yes, you also uh, studied about from your textbook. There are so many things, it's tangible things and intangible things, right? It's the same. Only uh, invisible part is 78%. Electric wave and magnetic field, right? Do you have a conscience? You help? No? What are you? Yeah, conscience. We help. Where? We have so many body parts and organs inside of our body, right? Where is your conscience is located exactly? We don't know, but we help, right? That is spiritual part. God even exists, even though he may not be seen. We need to make this clear. Just because you don't see him does not mean he does not exist. Invisible. Oxygen and so many uh, nitrogen in this air, right? If I open the conversation with you, make a question to like that, uh, what color is my voice? <laughs> you know, this is wrong question, right? Mm. Can you smell my voice? No, right. We have this kind of things. This is our world. You know, we have five senses. Each sense part is connected to our brain. But you need to understand this one. Our five senses is really an, uh, not perfect, sometimes miscalculated and sometimes miscollects its information. Even our brain also could be deceived because of the wrong information. Uh, what does it look like? What situation is this? Two men sit together, right? But truth is this one. The bunch of the garbage, right? Mm. But it looks like... Uh, to person. What situation is this? What's, go what's going to happen? Even dog wondered. 
Nothing. Right? Nothing. Why, why that, that, that kind of things happen? Because we miscalculate. Our brain is, was deceived. That's why with these five senses, understanding God and sense to God always cause some troubles and then produce some errors. Two uh, parts is totally different color, right? Same color. I can see same color. Put your hands. No one. If we help, you need a doctor. Uh, uh, if, we re- if we remove the borderline there, same color, right? Same. That's why don't trust your eyes, right? Especially don't trust your, what you're hearing. That's why God gave us this one, written word, right? And this is written. That's why whenever, every time we cannot reopen it, right? Time destroys everything. But in the middle of time, only record, write, write down on the paper, remain forever. Right? That's why God gave us the Bible. Our five cents is not perfect. Right? That's why don't rely on the five cents. We have to check the, what the Bible says. This is really important to us. Because the Bible declares also, God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. That's why before the living God, the pretending and exaggerating is not going to work. God knows everything. And then he's able to read what is inside of my mind. That's why you cannot hide from himself. The Bible never claims that God can be seen. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 16 said, The God who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. He has immortality, and no man has seen or can see. Sometimes uh, we are able to meet some people uh, who claim, I saw the God, right? All are fake. Exodus chapter 33, verse 20, You can see my face, for no man shall see me and leave. I already told you, you can see, you, you will have the chance to see the God in the, at the judgment seat. The Bible deals with facts, always facts. That's why the Bible is reliable. Bible is absolute truth. The Bible has been giving the answer so far. So, if you have any questions, ask God how. Open the Bible. The same meaning. The God, He has given His own scripture for us to find the answer. The way to know the God, we have uh, some, some ways here. The first one, the Bible. I already told you, the Bible was given. God has given the Bible us to understand the true God. And second, the universe, uh, the conscience. Conscience is a combination of con and science. Con means together, right? Science is acknowledgement. Know together how. I know myself and God knows myself. That's the conscience. That's why my conscience is related and connected with God. Conscience telling us God is alive. And God, conscience always tells us God is here. Right? No one here, you st- alone, and then you are now picking notes, and then your heart beating is really fast, right? <laughs> Not picking notes, what is it? <laughs> Whatever. Mm. The conscience is working beyond my desire. The third, universe. You know, our physics, our science telling us what God's created and what God's ordered. You know, science is not a religion. And science is the studying and researching, explaining what is going on here, right? But cannot say, cannot explain why this one is here. For example, 
we can, uh, we can explain the energy is here, and the energy is working uh, to do some work, but we don't know why energy is here. What is energy? Why energy should be here, right? Can't explain. Universe, you know, astronomy, and then if you look, uh, go outside of the universe, the universe telling us this is a huge scale of God, the creator, right? And then uh, fourth, Israel. Israel is the witness of Jehovah. Jehovah is the name of the Lord, right? So if we look into the history of Israelites, you are not able to deny there is, no, there is God. Hmm? And what about Jesus? Uh, Jesus, um, the God, the creator, incarnated as human. He was a Jesus. That's why if you study about Jesus, you can see the God and you can understand who is God. We're going to take the Bible first to search the, all the evidences and we are going to cover all those things through this Bible seminar. So Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16 said, Search from the book of the Lord and read. Yes, search, not carry, not keep it, right? Not decorate it. Search and read, read, right? Nowadays, people, they really... They are not good at studying the words of God, especially search the Bible. Why? This, that was really tough work. Instead of that, they really enjoyed listening to someone's saying and preaching. And they never uh, open. This is really hard to open the scriptures. That's why some message is really confused. And some message is right, some message is really fuzzy and not understandable. And God's will is really clear. It's the scriptures. The Bible carrying two stories, the history of mankind and God's aspect. And God's plan to save the mankind, the human, the sinner. If it's the Bible, and the Bible tell us about this. Origin of the Bible is really, you know, origin of the Bible. If you study this one, the Bible as it is, as it itself, this is really miraculous things. We divided the human time in two parts, before birth of Jesus and after birth of Jesus. We call that BC, before the Christ. And we call AD, nowadays, this year, AD 2023. AD means uh, Anno Domini, this is a Latin word, the year of the Lord. The Old Testament, uh, especially the five book of Moses, was written uh, 1500 BC. It's a really ancient scroll, ancient words. From now on, 3,500 years long. This is really, really ancient book. And latest book is the um, book of Revelation. It was written 100 AD. From the Genesis to the Revelation, for 1600 years long, it was written. It can be done. It cannot be done by a human being. God used human, person, hmm? inspired man as his pencil. And then he wrote the Bible. That's why Old Testament 39 books and New Testament 27 books. All in all, 66 books we have. And writers, um, they were uh, about 40 people, the fishermen, the scholar, shepherd, doctor, general, kings. And it was written in a very uh, different place. The Jerusalem, Samaria, Asia, and Rome, and some island. Different place, different time it was written, but the contents and the messages are con uh, continuously uh, connected. Um, if you read the Bible, the Bible is a story of the single narrative about one person, God, about Jesus Christ. An author is God. You know what? Until now on, there is a no one I'm author of the Bible. 
that was a really huge lie. Everyone knows that. Hmm? The Bible also uh, declared the God said, God said 3,800 times, which means God, he wrote down the Bible and contents from the beginning to the end of human history and what is the love of God. I have seen, I'm, I'm sinning, I will be a sinner until the end of my life. How did Jesus can save me? I'm here in the middle of a sin. But Bible telling us the way. Jesus is the way. So if you find the way, no matter what, you, are so, you will be so confident about your personal salvation. 3,500 years old book, ancient scroll. You know, let's uh, see one uh, movie clip here. Deep in the heart of the Judean wilderness, on the edge of the Dead Sea, in a place called Qumran, came some of the most significant artifacts of modern times, the Dead Sea Scrolls. For two millennia, the Dead Sea Scrolls lay hidden in 11 caves throughout the Qumran area. Their discovery marked the biggest archaeological find of the 20th century. To learn more, we hiked up to one of those 11 caves with Stephen Fawn, founder of the University of the Holy Land and an expert on the Dead Sea Scrolls. And why are they so important to us today? The uh, reason why the Dead Sea Scrolls are important is because they confirm the Bible that we have. There's variants, but basically it's you can hardly tell the difference between the two texts that we have in Qumran and in our own Bibles. The scrolls provide a 2,000-year-old link between the scriptures during the time of Jesus and today. Because we can actually hold the same scrolls in our hands, held in their hands 2,000 And when somebody sits in the New Testament in their Bible in the United States and they're, they're listening to their favorite sermon, they can know that this Bible was based upon manuscripts that people held in their hands from 2,000 years ago. Now for the 1967, the most significant of the entire discovery is on display at the Israel Museum. I thought that the best way uh, to honor the state of Israel is to bring back this major treasure of the Jewish nation for the celebration of the sixth anniversary of the country. It's hard to overstate the amazing coincidence that this massive scrolls were discovered around the same months that the state of Israel was proclaimed and was founded here in the land again. Reutemann explains why the scroll of Isaiah holds a special significance for Christians. We have only one instance in all the Gospels that actually we have Jesus reading from a scroll, as in the Gospel of Luke chapter 4, that on Shabbat and Saturday in Nazareth, he was given the book of Isaiah and he read from the book the famous passage in Isaiah chapter 61. The words Jesus quoted from Isaiah 61 were, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. 2,000 years ago, the Isaiah scroll and many others were hidden in the caves near Qumran. 2,000 years later, the scrolls still speak to us today. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Qumran. Even afar from the Christianity, they are dedicate, they dedicate their lives to research and search the Bible and study it. Why? The Bible is a miraculous thing. The Bible, 2 Timothy chapter 6, uh, 3, verse 16 said, All scriptures is given by inspiration of God. Actually, inspiration uh, is, is um, inspiration contains two words. Uh, in and spirit. The Spirit of God uh, came into man and guided them to write. The Bible was inspired by God. That's why if you read the entire Bible, the Bible is not matched with the human emotion. You cannot smell it. 
you know, all the books which was written in the by, uh, written in person, we can we can smell that person, right? His idea and his way of thinking, and then his theory, we can sense it. The Bible, we couldn't do that. Which means, the Bible is written by God, not a human. So knowing this first, Second Peter chapter one verse twenty and twenty one. Knowing this first, then no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. This is the Spirit of God. That's why the Bible was given. The human was used by God's hands to write down what God said. That's the scriptures. So, one day, the kind of person like a prophet, a prophet like uh, Jeremiah, God said, The word that came Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speak the Lord God of uh, Israel, saying, Write in the book for yourself all the words that I have spoken to you. That's why Jeremiah, he write down and dictate all the message of God. That's why this Writing became the book of Jeremiah. He received the message, the destruction of the city of Jerusalem uh, later. It's, it wasn't difficult to, to write down what God says. It will happen sooner, uh, soon, but Daniel was different. The Daniel who wrote down what is going to happen at the last doomsday, he, he couldn't understand what God said. Why, what is this? That's why Daniel made a question to God. Daniel chapter 12, verse 8 and 9. Although I heard, I didn't understand. Then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. That's why he just write down, I don't know what it is. And then he sealed it. Now, in our generation, the book of Daniel is open, and then we are able to interpret what is the true meaning of this old scripture of Daniel. The key opened that Daniel was time. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall learn to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Yes, nowadays, we have abundant of accumulation of the knowledge. That's why we are able to understand what the book of Daniel is saying. The prophecy is opening now. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You know, before I got, uh, before I got saved, I tried to read the Bible, but after reading verse 1, I couldn't move forward and then close it again. Why? From the first one, I couldn't believe it, right? Whoa, this is really out of sense. The God created heaven and the earth. Not worth it to read. But uh, when I studied the words of God, I was able to find out what was that reason. Without faith, you cannot move forward verse 2. Understand? The Bible, entire 66 books, is totally sealed. If we don't have faith, you cannot move forward. So, that was the reason. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26. Uh, Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things. Lift up your eyes on high. Previously, I always put my eyes on the ground. Where is a good place to play? Where is a good place to enjoy and entertain myself? Where is a good place to see the wonderful woman? <laughs> Not here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so that was my attitude before. But when I studied the words of God, for the first time in my life, I was able to lift up my eyes on high. Oh, all this universe was created by God. I was able to understand that. Here, Romans chapter 1, verse 20. For since the creation of the world, his, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, 
even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Probably some people might think, I can make good excuses before the judgment seat. I don't have much, I don't have even one time the chance to understand you and study the words of God. My country, the Bible is forbidden. And Christianity is not allowed. That's why I'm innocent. Probably they're going to say it like that, right? But God will judge them. Because all the creature, all the creation explain that and shouting and yelling, God is alive, He's the creator. I'm going to show one simple insect. But this simple insects have a great skill to hunt. You know, fishermen, they used to use the netting, right? Not just the fisherman. This spider can do that. The gladiator spider makes her web from a very special kind of multi-strand silk which she backcombs to make fuzzy. She carefully attaches this to a framework of ordinary unfuzzy filaments. The fuzzy silk doesn't have glue on it, but it will entangle hairy legs. And it's also extremely elastic, which is crucially important. It's finished. She reaches down with her forelegs to check how far away she is from the ground. Then she snips most of the framework threads and holds the fuzzy rectangle between her four front legs. She's ready. Her enormous eyes are so sensitive she can hunt in near darkness. A bush cricket would make a rich meal, but it's very powerful and it could put up a good fight. Now it must be parceled up and the fuzzy silk makes excellent wrapping, just as it does for Hypteotes. Spider, how could this spider can equip in this hunting skill? At the hunting academy? <laughs> you know, God put his God has even in this humble insect, right? Hmm. This word is designed by someone that is God. You know, this is a um, butterfly eggs. Have you seen that before? No, right? But God designed this one. This is God's skill. And this is God's scale hmm? designed by God. This is a diatom. Uh, you, while you are uh, swimming, in the river, you can drink so much things. But this is really a good structure, amazing uh, shaping structure. This is really amazing structure. It's designed. It cannot be like that by chance. This is a nudie branch. You can see this is a sea snail in the seashore. Have you seen that? You know, Someone drawing the line, right? Uh, drawing the line. Who touched this one? Is designed. You cannot make any excuses. Look at these designs. There is a pattern, right? The style of drawing, right? It was designed. Our world is designed, which means God is alive. He's here. He's a creator. What about this one? Can you see um, the color? You know, it's really hard color picking, right? 
This is really sophisticated color, coloring, right? Only God can do that. You know, this is a transformer. The, the man, they really loved to play the toy transformer, right? But transformer is come from this one. This one is uh, Armadillo, uh, the name of species. This is, it looks like a ball, right? But this one, empowered and designed by God. And this bead also, hmm? you know, transformer like that. Have you seen it? Look at this one. This one. This look cute, right? Adorable. <laughs> Designed by God. And also, the Bible says, uh, also, uh, Bible, uh, even scientific matter is written in ancient scroll, like a book of Job. Hmm? Uh, for example, let me show one scripture here. Job chapter 36, verse 30 and 31. Look, he scatters his light, this is sun light, upon it and covers depths of the sea, for by these he judges the peoples. He gives food in abundance. You know, um, wicked people, they got the thunder lightning on the street. Yes, we, can, we, we, we understand that, right? But how, what, is the, what does this mean? He gives food in advance with his thunder lightning? In ancient scroll, you know, Job, uh, this book was written 3,500 years ago. But how could they know the thunder lightning, thunder, uh, thunder light, um, give the food in abundance. Nowadays, modern science proved it. Here, um, let me uh, read some scripture here. Uh, the nitrogen, nitrogen molecules in the air consist of two atoms which are held together very tightly, right? Very hard to separate these two uh, molecules. But when uh, sunlight struck this air, uh, in the thunderstorm, there is enough electrical energy in lightning to separate the nitrogen atoms in the air. Once the atoms are separated, they can fall to earth with rainwater and combine with minerals in the soil to form uh, nitrate, a type of fertilizer. Nitrogen, 78% here in the air, 78%. This is a huge volume, right? But it got the sunlight, it turns uh, fertilizer. Let's listen. Hey there, I'm meteorologist Aaron Thomas, and this is The Breakdown. On this episode, we are talking about why lightning is good for agriculture. Now, with the warmer weather that has returned, we're going to start seeing some more planting and some more gardening taking place. And of course, rain does help with our gardens and keeping them healthy, but lightning also plays a big role as well. So nitrogen is the most abundant element in the Earth's atmosphere, 78% in fact, only 21% of it is oxygen. And plants require nitrogen nitrogen to grow, but they can't make use of this airborne nitrogen until it gets broken down. So here's how that happens. We have these nitrogen molecules that are bound very tightly together, and it takes an extreme force to separate them. And that is where lightning comes into play. So it's going to separate these nitrogen molecules, and that's going to allow them to attach to oxygen. And this creates nitrogen dioxide. Now the rain is going to come and dissolve the nitrogen dioxide into some something called nitrates. This is called a super fertilizer. So as that rain comes down, it hits our soil. That's what's going to be that fertilizer for our plants to grow healthy and strong. Yes. The uh, announcer uh, introduced this uh, issue as a modern science, right? But 3,500 years ago, in ancient school, how could describe this matter, right? 
Only the creator, creator can tell us the truth. Why? He's a creator. Nowadays, um, this is really attractive, the theory, intelligent design. Many scientists involved and connected and associated together to study about this matter. But they really are careful. Uh, this is a new era to open the science field. Uh, but uh, here, the Michael Behe, he is indeed uh, lead this uh, matter here. Um, here, uh, book review, Darwin Devolves. Actually, nowadays, many, many scientists, uh, they said that if the Darwin, if he has a microscope, he's not going to initiate um, evolutionism. He, he couldn't have this uh, microscope. Uh, microscope, right? Mm. But now, he, he, his voice is very loud and clear nowadays. You know, this intelligent design. Mm. Let, me, let me read some articles here. here. Uh, it is a theory that proved with uh, verifiable scientific tools that the structures or information of life is designed by someone, designed by someone, because the complexity of life and life information cannot be explained by a um, du uh, directionless uh, ev evolutionary uh, mechanism such as natural selection. It only proves the designed fact, designed fact, not who the designer is. If they mentioned and started and digging down who is a designer, this is not a science anymore. This is religion, right? That's why they research about designed fact. It is explained that it is uh, reasonable to understand it as a product of intellectual design rather than random natural selection. You are not a, a product of natural selection. It is true. We all were designed by God. The Bible telling us the truth. Here. Mm. Our cell, our body, composed of this, uh, 60 trillion cells. Mm. Here, Psalm 139, verse 13 and 14. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And then my soul knows very well. We cannot deny. If you, if you search even your own body, you cannot, uh, you, you, you could understand that this is designed, not a product of accident. Here. <clears throat> Our body is composed of the 60 trillion, 60 trillion cells. This is a really miracle. Uh, miracle happen in my body. Look at here. This is an organic system.
This is our body. And then all things are happening beyond our control. That's why still we are able to survive in this world. God designed and He created us. The Bible says, Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things. God creator. God the creator. He created all these things. Look, look at here, ants. Ants can imagine there is a moon outside. No, right? Ants cannot understand human society, right? But ants are there. A human is here. The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 4, For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. All building requires builder. Do you agree? All creature demands creator. Right? God is here. Here, God the creator. Only true creator can explain about creation. One day, uh, if you look, or when you look in the mirror, but you can find a small scar here. But you, you don't have any understanding why this scar is here. So what would you do if you find this one? You call mom, right? Mom, why did this thing happen? But mother said, I don't know. This is not true mother, right? But true mother can explain that. Oh, when you were young, five years old, you were rushing to me while you're on the way, you hit the table, right? And the stage is 10 times. And the true mom can explain that, right? But if this is not true mother, cannot say that, right? You know, handling and mentioning the creation, this is really, really. Uh, risky. Why? Uh, the science uh, evolve, uh, or is that getting um, more, uh, getting better scale, right? And then uh, evolve, uh, improved, right? Improved. That's why uh, nowadays the science um, they cannot uh, challenge the creation. They prove the creation nowadays. This, that was the way it was given, intelligent design. The Bible said, Job chapter 38, verse 4 and 5, Where were you when I laid up foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding, who determined its measurement, sure you know, or surely you know, or who stretched the line upon it. When the man, a man, the Job, uh, he made a question to God, God asked him about this one. Who determined its measurement? God, when God designed and he, he created the entire universe, he set the volume, the size of planets. And then he stretched out the distance. And then he made a line to follow, right? Until now on, all the universe is to follow the rules, what God commanded, you know? This is where you live in our solar system. Where? Earth, third planet here. Can you see the green, green zone? This is a life zone. Only here, the water can stay as a liquid. Hmm? Can you see your place here, Guangzhou? Can you see that here? Hmm. We are here like a dirt like dirt, but it's a dirt. Why life is so tough, right? This is what, where we are. Can you find your own place? Your place, you put your own pillow. Hmm? Yes, we are here somewhere, right? Astronomy makes people humble. Why? We cannot even travel with our own imagination. This is really huge. The Bible said also, you, you cannot travel even your imagination. Our world is really, really fine-tuned. This is a clear evidence our world was created by a creator. Look at here.
from galaxies and stars down to atoms and subatomic particles. The very structure of our universe is determined by these numbers. These are the fundamental constants and quantities of the universe. Scientists have come to the shocking realization that each of these numbers has been carefully dialed to an astonishingly precise value, a value that falls within an exceedingly narrow, life-permitting range. If any one of these numbers were altered by even a hair's breadth, no physical, interactive life of any kind could exist anywhere. There'd be no stars, no life, no planets, no chemistry. Consider gravity, for example. The force of gravity is determined by the gravitational constant. If this constant varied by just one in 10 to the 60th parts, none of us would exist. To understand how exceedingly narrow this life-permitting range is, imagine a dial divided into 10 to the 60th increments. To get a handle on how many tiny points on the dial this is, compare it to the number of cells in your body or the number of seconds that have ticked by since time began. If the gravitational constant had been out of tune by just one of these infinitesimally small increments, the universe would either have expanded and thinned out so rapidly that no stars could form and life couldn't exist, or it would have collapsed back on itself with the same result. No stars, no planets, and no life. Or consider the expansion rate of the universe. This is driven by the cosmological constant. A change in its value by a mere one part in 10 to the 120th parts would cause the universe to expand too rapidly or too slowly. In either case, the universe would, again, be life prohibiting. Or another example of fine tuning. If the mass and energy of the early universe were not evenly distributed to an incomprehensible precision of one part in 10 to the 10 to the 123rd, the universe would be hostile to life of any kind. The fact is, our universe permits physical, interactive life only because these, and many other numbers, have been independently and exquisitely balanced on a razor's edge. Wherever physicists look, they see examples of fine-tuning. The remarkable fact is that the values of these numbers seem to have been very finely adjusted to make possible the development of life. If anyone claims not to be surprised by the special features that the universe has, he's hiding his head in the sand. These special features are surprising and unlikely. God has tuned all of these things uh, meticulously. You know, uh, why? For human, right? Mm. Our, our planet is really inhabitable. And also, we are able to stay here because of this uh, good care of God, right? He created everything and tuned everything for us. God doesn't have any plan to each of us, right? We have purpose. We have reason. And God created everything. You are the reason. Uh, speaking of the universe, let's check one more verse here. Jude chapter 1 verse 13. This is mentioning about the black hole. You know, black hole. Uh, Ragging waves of the sea, forming up their own shame, wandering stars, this kind of comets, right? For whom is resolved the blackness of darkness forever? You know, this, this is mentioning the black hole. Nowadays, the scientists, they uh, cooperate together, and then they uh, build the large size of telescope as a uh, planet size, Earth. They were able to take picture of the black hole here. Nowadays, we, uh, they have the picture like that. Mm -hmm. This is computer uh, simulations. This is a real picture. The black hole is real. The Bible says, right? But ancient time, mm -hmm. long times ago, God, he mentioned about the black hole. But now our science proves the Bible is true. God is alive. The illustration of the black holes anatomy. Uh, this one. Look at this here. is a picture of the supermassive black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy, known as Sagittarius A star. 
The black hole itself doesn't emit light, so what we're seeing is the hot plasma swirling around it. This is only the second picture of a black hole ever. It was taken by the Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration, the same people who brought you this image of the supermassive black hole at the center of galaxy M87. Now, their original plan was to image Sagittarius A star first. Since it's in our own galaxy, it is 2,000 times closer than M87 star. Yes, we have it now, the proof. The barber is true, right? God created the entire universe. The best creature of him is this one, human being, right? Human. Uh, our body formed with dust from the dirt like animal. But one more procedure was added to make, to create a human being. He put his image inside of our body. That is my soul. That is my ego. My soul is still here. Our body, as you know, experienced, as you experienced already, our body constantly changed, right? And my soul is still there, right? For example, sometimes we, we are able to lose our body parts, right? But still I'm there, right? Our body, our flesh is not myself. God is spirit, right? Um, the Spirit of God, we used to uh, uh, write uh, capital S. This is the Spirit of God. But small spirit S, uh, small S is our spirit. The copy of God's spirit is ourself. This is my ego. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. What is the meaning of image? You know, we, when, we delivered, uh, when, when uh, we delivered the babies, uh, this baby is going to follow my, my appearance, right? We, we, we share the DNA. That's why the children used to take after their parents. The human being is the same. We are the copy of God, image of God. Does it ring a bell? Hmm? Yes, children's or the copy of their parents. The, this professor, uh, Kwak Kumju, uh, he is a professor of the Seoul University. He studied about this, uh, God and soul. But she mentioned about that. From the childhood, the children, they are understanding and sensing the, the force of God. Let's listen. <laughs> 우리 인간하고 다르다 하는 개념이 어릴 때부터 가지고 있다라고 볼수 있겠죠. 그래서 신의 존재에 대한 거는 우리 인간은 본능적으로 타고나면서 이미 가지고 있는 그러한 거라고 볼수 있겠고. Yes, yeah, so every human has. They are able to sense and understand and realize God is here, right? We cannot deny this one. That's why most of the people, especially who really feel strong these things in their per, uh, personal mind. They, they used to follow the religious teaching and religious uh, things. Being religious is easy, but understanding the truth is really important. Truth is really easy to understand, but really hard to find. The Bible tells us the truth always. Our body came from the dirt. The first man God created, Adam, the image of God. Right? Spiritual being. And he said, I'm a spiritual being, but I dwell in the body. Our body is not ourselves. You have to abandon your body after using once. This one is disposable. Understand? Your spirit is yourself. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 said, <clears throat> Let me read here. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible declared the human has three compositions, you know, spirit, soul, and body, not head, body, legs, understand? Spirit, soul, and body. <clears throat> The body has desire. It's stuck in the matter of food and clothing and place to live, right? 
this, this desire of body is always asking something every single time, right? This is a bottomless desire until I finish my life. And the soul, this is a matter of knowledge, emotions, and will, hmm? and spirit is different. Only human has. The God's image, the seeking God and conscience and eternal life. You know, conscience, conscience. Hmm? Conscience is part of the function of our spirit. You have to understand this one. Something that animal doesn't have. This one only human has. We have what is called conscience. Conscience is a saying, you know, that is wrong and you know that could get trouble and that this is not good. This, don't go that way and then stop it. Always saying something from inside of me, right? Conscience can, has the meaning of uh, together. And science, uh, science is knowledge. We share all about my things with God. That's what the conscience is here. Technically, we, can say, we cannot say that conscience is mine. Conscience also in me, but conscience is shared with God. And God also say that conscience is mine. That's why when you stand before the judgment seat before God, and conscience will appear as witness of your life. And then you cannot make any excuses about all things happen in your life. Conscience is telling you constantly, God is exist here. And also, because of this spirit, the function of spirit, uh, we know, Eternal life is waiting for me, right? We used to say every single day, I don't have much time. I don't have, I don't have much time to do this, right? I'm busy, right? But your conscience always acknowledges that there is eternal, eternity, right? Eternity. This is different. It makes us different with animals. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 said, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living being. One more procedure was added, unlikely with animal. The Bible said, Job chapter 19, verse 27, uh, 26 said, And after my skin, and after my skin, even this body is destroyed. Then without my flesh shall I see God. There is myself come out of my body, and there is myself to see the God. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 9 said, Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. How lovely mentioning about this, right? But, but, know that for all this, God will bring you into judgment. Yes, we are responsible for my life, right? That's why if you are not ready enough, you're scared your own death. Why? You are not ready yet. Ecclesiastes, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 said, He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts. Eternity is in your heart. Don't, don't deny this one. You have it, right? Sometimes people used to think, where is God? Where is the heaven and hell? Nothing after death. But that's wrong. That's wrong. God will judge every human being. Every human being. Um, whenever we uh, open this kind of Bible seminar, people really, really, they really, um, what is that? Uh, uncomfortable. Why? They have so many desires they have to follow. Right? This man, look at this man. Look at uh, what is in his head. I need money. I have to do work. Right? Yeah, God is good, but money is better. Always. Money is making me alive. Right? Not money only. What about? I need a house. I have to enjoy my life. Life is short. Right? I don't have much time to do this. 
I need a car as well. You know, the Bible said, Luke chapter 12, verse 20, But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? Your soul, one day your soul uh, will be taken by God himself. That's the end of your life. And then the judgment is waiting for you. And after my skin, even this body is destroyed. Then without my flesh shall I see God. The Bible declared the truth. Yes. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. Uh, also, it is proven so many times with various kind of people, um, they had experienced what is happening after their own death. Uh, we call this uh, NDE, near-death experience, right? Look at here. 죽어 있던 동안에 일어난 일을 기억한다고 주장하는 사람들은 자비를 들여가며 자신들의 경험을 연구하는 모임을 가지고 있습니다. 교통사고, 자살, 심장마비. 그리고 어떤 사람은 벼락에 맞았다 다시 살아나기도 했습니다. 토니의 직업은 의사입니다. 그는 매일같이 아프거나 죽음이 임박한 사람과 마주하는데 한 번은 그 죽음이 자신을 찾아오기도 했습니다. In 1994, I was at a family gathering. Unfortunately, it was during a storm that I was not aware of. I had the phone right about here when the phone station that I was in got struck by lightning. I saw a big flash of light come out of the phone and it hit me in the face. 그것은 이성적인 그의 성격이나 판단과 관계없이 피할 수 없는 사고였습니다. 그리고 그 뒤에 논리와 이성으로 감당할 수 없는 사건이 일어났습니다. And she got right down to me and then ran by. And I thought, well, that's pretty strange. And I, I turned to see where she was going. And when I looked back, I saw my body was on the ground. Oh, shit, I'm dead. I saw her getting down on her knees to do CPR. And I could see them. I could hear them. But... They couldn't see me or hear me, and I tried calling to them. Years ago, uh, when I worked in, in, a, in a different hospital, I went to see a patient of mine who had been involved in his resuscitation about a week before, week early, and I went to see him, and as I approached him, he clearly recognized me, and he said to me, oh, how, how, how are you doing? And I remember saying, sorry, how, how do you know me? And he said, you were at my cardiac arrest. And he, ex you know, he began to, ex to, to tell his story of what he saw and he remembers my face and he remembers what everybody was doing. And at that time, it struck me as being somewhat odd. Interesting, though, is that we have found that consistently through different studies by different researchers that at least 10 to 20 percent of people who've died and been brought back to life again will recall very specific accounts that suggests that their mind and consciousness may have continued functioning and working even though they had died and their brain had shut down. They had a flat line on the brain. The brain was not working. Yeah, this is our final. You know, every human, they would be famous only 50 minutes at their own funeral. The truth is this one. So many people, probably, they visit your morning place, and then you lay down your body at the coffin, and then they will show some sadness before your dead body. You know, the truth is, when they get back to their own home, and then they're watching TV, right? And they're laughing with their, parents, uh, their children, right? And then they're going to sleep, and got a body, and then go to work again. Immediately, you will be eliminated from this earth. And no one can remember your life like yourself. This is our self, right? The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, As it is appointed for man to die once, but after this, the judgment. Judgment is waiting. That's why we're really scared about our own death. When you stand before God, you will see all things what happened in your life. 
And then God will show all the things to you, in front of you. And then you will see what, was, what happened in your life. All those things is the same. And Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 23 said, You have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Against the Lord. And anyone that found written in the book of the life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. This is not blackmailing. This is not threatening. This is the truth. John chapter 3, verse 3 said, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Yes. Let's figure out through this, throughout this Bible seminar the matter of being born again. What is the meaning of being born again? The Bible tells us how could we get this. Otherwise, we have to consume our life, eternity, eternal life at the hell. Mark chapter 9, verse 48, the hell is where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. This is a really horrible place. There is no chance to escape from here. You once go there, eternally, you will be eliminated. And Luke chapter 12, verse 5 said, But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has power to cast into the hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. God, he has to do this. Why? He's the justice. According to what you have done as a sin, God, he is going to punish you. This is judgment. Which way? Which way are you going to follow? You know the truth? The most population of the human being, uh, this planet, they really want to go to heaven. That's true. Yes. But not everyone. Not everyone. Here, <clears throat> last verse. Fortunately, this is a mindset of God. The first thing was chapter 2, verse 4. God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. How lucky we are. This is God's desire. That's why don't miss the chance. Yeah, probably you might have some uh, confidence about your salvation. Yeah, but uh, probably you couldn't have enough time to check it again. This is a good chance to do this, right? But if you find out and figure out your, um, your uh, eternal destination based upon the words of God, your faith is really concrete and solid, right? That's why. Why don't you come tomorrow? I will come. How about you? Mm. Let's enjoy the Bible seminar. We, we put together for your own sake. I'm done already, right? That's why. Um, please come tomorrow. Let's pray. Merciful Heavenly Father, thank you for giving this chance to learn your words. Please protect all of us from the evil, uh, evil force and guide us mm, until the end of last uh, session. Uh, we only rely on you. Everything is on your hand. We ask in Jesus' name, who loves us always. Amen. Uh, thank you for your time, and yes, we faced unpleasant truth, by the way. It was all about profound and fundamental topics, by the way. Okay, I hope that first session was so helpful and then meaningful to each one of us.